Pastor Fred Donaldson, and you might remember that uh, the Lord called him to preach when he was a pastor um, nearby in Plainfield, Illinois. And uh, he was 35 years old, had a family, and God called him to preach and, and, and go to, I'm uh, sorry, God called him to the mission field to China. And um, he went there, and we've, we've gone through a couple things, but it's such a war-torn area and um, uh, just a very difficult area um, politically, let alone uh, the challenges of the language and, and all that goes with that. But um, we, uh, if you remember, um, the Japanese invaded China in 1937, um, and there was a war, a war there before our World War II. Uh, at the, the beginning, really, that's kind of a, one of the beginnings of World War II part of it. And, uh, and so he was caught up in that, had to move from his, his town of uh, Hangzhou to, to Shanghai um, because of the, the Japanese incursion there. While they were in Shanghai, he realized that now this is a great mission field, uh, millions of people in Shanghai. And so uh, he began working there. Um, I believe he had to go back to America, then he came back and, and continued to work in Shanghai and then um, uh, began the Shanghai Baptist Temple, uh, Baptist Tabernacle, sorry, and, um, and that, that ministry grew uh, by leaps and bounds. And um, where we left them then was um, in 1941, of course, uh, Japan uh, bombed Pearl Harbor, which brings the United States into World War II. And the next day, December 8th, um, Fred, Effie, and their 15-year-old daughter, Lois, they found themselves uh, standing in the cold uh, for hours uh, in a registration line that stretched for, uh, I guess, a couple of miles uh, with other, with other uh, uh, people that were considered enemy status. They received special armbands uh, signifying they were enemy, and they were confined to their homes some weeks later. All these people were, were put together um, in a prisoner of war camp, uh, which was, happened to be a bombed out university in Shanghai. Um, now, through the efforts of the American diplomats, um, the, the, this is the very early parts of the war uh, that we were involved in, uh, the, the, the Japanese were persuaded to allow the, the prisoners here, and there were quite a few of them, uh, thousands, um, to, uh, to really kind of govern themselves. And, and the Japanese allowed that to happen as long as, uh, as, long as they didn't cause any trouble. And uh, so they, they set up a little bit of a, a government, as it were, and, and kind of operated within that. Um, there were professional people and skilled people as, and in governmental uh, hierarchy. And, um, but they, they formed a community and really tried to make the best of it because they didn't know how long they were going to be there. Um, and um, of course, they faced cold and all the problems, you know, insects and, and disease, uh, lack of food. Uh, you know, uh, I guess they said that life was bearable, but the, um, the, they had to listen to uh, several hours a day of uh, political lectures, and, uh, and uh, the guards continually warned that all escape routes were closed. Um, Effie noted in her writings that uh, she said what they did not know was that there was one road that was impossible for them to close, and that was the road up to the very throne of grace. And, um, and her sweet spirit really carried them, carried them through much of this. But uh, health concerns were the greatest worry. Um, there were doctors in the camp, but there were no medicine. There were no medicines and uh, no, uh, nothing to treat the diseases with. Uh, food was scarce. Uh, Fred lost 45 pounds in about a year. Um, dysentery uh, played the camp. Uh, Effie was very sick. Um, in fact, uh, they repeat, repatriated all these people in that camp uh, through some negotiation between the American and Japanese government. Um, and she had to be carried actually um, on a stretcher to the, to the ship, but they finally uh, were able to board a transport ship that took them to um, Sweden and eventually home. Um, so after three and a half years in Shanghai, now they're back home again in the middle of the war. It's 1944, and they had been a prisoner of war for over 22 months, almost two years, and finally, um, 84 days later, they arrived back in, in New York Harbor. Now, uh, it was quite a lavish welcome home. So it were, we're again in the middle of World War II in America, but people understood what, uh, what these missionaries had been going through and actually all these people that had been in the, in the prisoner war camp. Um, they regained their strength. The war ended about a year later, a little over a year later, 
And uh, this time they were able to return to Shanghai. He felt the Lord, of course, wanted him there. That's where his mission was. And um, they, uh, actually their son Paul now, he's married. Uh, if you remember, he was involved in the story. He'd been sent home to go to school, sent back to the United States to go to school. And um, so with, with Paul and his, and his wife, they went back to Shanghai and continued the ministry there. Now, <laughs> it doesn't end here, though, because after World War II is over, the Japanese are not the problem. But now the communist Chinese are the problem. And the communists uh, are driving further, further into, the, into China, uh, the southern part of China, where they were. And uh, uh, seeing the impending problems, this is actually a worse problem than the Japanese were uh, a few years earlier. Um, uh, Fred sent his son and daughter-in-law back to the States. Um, they were determined to see this through. And, and, uh, but it became um, impossible. They realized that they probably would have been killed. Um, the members of their church begged them to, to leave um, because they would be one of the first people killed as the communists came into that area. And the very last minute, um, in 1949, they evacuated and um, made it back to the United States. Now, Fred is in his 60s now, and uh, unbeknownst to him, he did not know this at the time, but this would be the last time um, they would ever see China uh, because he would uh, have another ministry the Lord would bring him to in America. But upon returning to America, he felt that um, he knew that uh, maybe he would he realized very soon, quickly, that he would not be able to go back to China as it became communist. Um, but his son then was called to um, uh, uh, Taiwan, then Formosa, and um, he felt that he could go to Taiwan with his son. But something else was happening. And in, in the United States in, in 1950, um, there is this great battle between um, fundamentalism, fundamentalism and the forces that would would uh, wanted to infiltrate fundamentalism and change um, uh, the beliefs. And there was a, a several splits in the 50s among different groups. Um, we just uh, heard of the death of Billy Graham this week, and, and he would have been involved in that in the, in the early 50s, uh, something we're not going to go into. But in that time period, um, the, the Baptist Bible Fellowship was formed right, right at that point. And that event, uh, essentially was a missionary outreach, a bunch of missionaries. And when they were in the, involved in, a, um, I think it was called the World Fundamental Baptist Missionary Fellowship, and uh, this is where the Donaldsons were, were, uh, were sent out of. And um, that organization <clears throat> began to be what I'll call new evangelical, and there were a lot of problems there as, as they were fighting against the fundamentalists, and there was a large split. All those missionaries went to this new organization called the Baptist Bible Fellowship, which at that time was very fundamental and separated. Um, it's hard to describe. We know that organization now, and they are not. But, but um, at that time, uh, many, many good men and women involved in that, in that uh, mission organization. Later, there would be a college started and everything else, uh, as, as you know. But, but uh, so the Baptist Bible Fellowship. And in that whole transition, um, Fred Donaldson was asked to become the, the director of missions for the Baptist Bible Fellowship in this new, this new uh, missionary fellowship that was being organized. And his job would be that of organizing, promoting, directing, directing the missionary outreach, much like Dr. Gambrell does in, in, um, in his organization. Um, as I said, they, they planned to go to, to Taiwan, free, free China, but uh, it did not work out. They stayed, that God was calling them to stay and, and do much like, I suppose, um, Luther Rice did in, another, in a different era. If you remember, Luther Rice came home after being with the Judsons on the field, and he never went back uh, to be with the Judsons. He actually spent his time traveling and telling people about uh, the mission work uh, where, the, where the Judsons were. And this is what Donaldson, the Donaldsons ended up doing. And um, I won't go into it, but boy, that organization grew. And they grew from a, a, a matter of 20 missionaries to over 400 missionaries in 26 fields under his leadership. Um, his impact is just really was uh, uh, blessed of God, and the Lord used him to challenge just hundreds and hundreds of young people to, um, as he said, lift up their heads and look unto the fields of the world. Um, eventually, uh, Fred Donaldson would become known as Mr. Missions uh, in the Baptist Bible Fellowship, and uh, eventually, in 1968, he retired, and the Lord called him home in uh, February 9, 1974. And um, um, really an amazing story, uh, kind of a fun story to read about all the all the things that happened there, but 
um, what, what I what I couldn't spend a lot of time on, and, and which I mentioned, but didn't spend a lot of time on, but the, the hundreds of thousands of Chinese that were led to the Lord through his ministry in uh, Hangzhou and, and Shanghai, uh, just an amazing ministry. And, um, you know, the, of course, God knows the future, and God knew that that country would be closed. And who knows the, you know, well, we won't know until we get to heaven, the, 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 hundreds of thousands of Christians that were left behind when the Chinese took over and how they were able to continue, you know, to serve the Lord there when, when, when the world could not get in. And, um, and so it's just a, a, a amazing story. Um, Beach and Vic said that if there ever was an indispensable man, it surely was Fred Donaldson. And, um, so we just want to thank the Lord for, for his, his, um, his ministry and how the Lord, how he allowed the Lord to use him and uh, in, in China during a very, very difficult time. Um, and I want to thank the Lord this morning for Fred Donaldson and his wife, Effie.